Having used taxpayers' money to bail out the banks, these same individuals have been hit by a requirement for larger deposits to get a mortgage on a house and tighter credit as banks widen their profit margin on business in order to rebuild their balance sheets. My ambition was to retire, but this has just put my retirement on the back burner. There's no way I could even anticipate retiring for the next four or five years. I, don't see, I can't see any, any hope in that whatsoever. When the banks stopped lending to one another, it turned a period of slowing growth caused by higher commodity prices into a major recession. The consumer was hit from all sides and left in the grip of a negative wealth effect due to price collapses in housing and shares caused by the banking crisis. The effects in the long term are harder to gauge. This financial crisis came along and bang, shocked everybody. We haven't even begun to uh, understand the psychological impact of that. When you have big catastrophes, um, these realizations become more vivid for people. It's awful, the, the thought that you can only proceed to wisdom via catastrophe, but that tends to be the way um, the human race progresses. I think if we allow, us to, uh, allow ourselves to go back to business as usual, there's a real risk that this crisis will be followed in fairly short order by another one. I don't actually think that we can allow this crisis to pass without there being a very, very serious re-regulation of these financial markets. The collapse of the banks represents an opportunity for us to rethink what they could and should be and for how we want them to work. I think my vision of a reformed bank system has a bit of um, back to the future about it, really. I mean, I'd quite like to see retail banking revert to a more traditional model. So high street banking would be quite simple. It would be fairly traditional, fairly safe, very boring, very dull, not very profitable. And it would be heavily regulated by the government. And in return, the banks would have an absolute cast iron guarantee from the government that if they ran into trouble, the government would be squarely behind them. We are moving towards much more highly regulated private and PLC banks, and then a, I think a much bigger and more diverse socialised banking system. The banking guys call it the barbell, so that it's heavy at both ends. At this end, there is a socialised and heavily regulated private banking system. So mutuals, post office bank, heavily regulated high street banks with no speculative activity attached. And then at the other end, you get the speculation. And the only precondition is that this end is just cut off from the other end by some kind of regulatory firewall. What's the problem with it all is that none of what I've just described can be high return. None of it can return banking or that sector of banking to the high returns and high complexity that existed before. The fragility of the world's banking system has been made painfully clear, but whether there's really the will to change it is still far from certain. Thank you.